An enormous, empty area, relentless sun, and harsh hostile environment that define the Trinity site make it a dreadful and terrifying landscape. Only the occasional cactus or rock formation can be seen in the miles-long desolate wasteland, and the sun's shimmering heat cruelly beats down on the parched, cracked earth. The place of death and destruction, where only the toughest and most resilient species can survive. It was here that the most important event of the 20th century took place. At exactly 5.29 a.m., July 16, 1945 in the New Mexican desert. After years of labor and billions of dollars in investment, the world would be changed forever. J. Robert Oppenheimer was born into a prosperous family on April 22, 1904, in New York City. He was the second of three kids and was raised in a sophisticated and academically challenging setting. Both of his parents, Ella Friedman and Julius Oppenheimer, were of Jewish ancestry and placed a high value on education. Oppenheimer excelled in his academics throughout his infancy and had an early knack for science and mathematics. He went to the Ethical Culture Fieldston School in New York, where he excelled academically and shown a passion for physics. He continued his academic excellence at Harvard College, where he received a summa cum laude degree in chemistry in 1925. Oppenheimer left for Europe after receiving his diploma to further his studies at the University of Gerden in Germany, where he eventually received his PhD in physics. His initial exposure to the work of some of the best scientists of his era, including as Max Born, James Frank, and Erwin Schrödinger occurred there. Oppenheimer was profoundly affected by these events, which also influenced the way he thought about the nature of physics and what could be achieved. At the University of California, Berkeley, Oppenheimer accepted a position as a professor after his return to the country in 1929. He made a name for himself as a smart young physicist right away, and his status as one of the most promising scientists of his time soon followed. He put in a lot of effort, contributing significantly to the field of quantum mechanics and assisting in the establishment of the principles that underpin our current comprehension of atomic science. Despite all of his achievements, Oppenheimer maintained a modest and quiet demeanor. He was highly regarded by his peers for his integrity, intelligence, and wisdom. He had strong moral principles, and he was dedicated about applying his scientific discoveries to improve the world. Reports regarding the creation of a potent new weapon that released enormous amounts of energy through nuclear reactions started flood out of Europe in 1939. Oppenheimer was acutely aware of the ramifications of this new technology, and he immediately joined a top-secret government project to develop an atomic weapon. The United States wasted no time in getting to the forefront of this project assigning General Leslie Groves as the project's director, known as the Manhattan Project. Groves was renowned for his excellent technical abilities, his effective and systematic managerial style, and mainly his capacity to complete tasks. He was known as a no-nonsense, self-sufficient leader who could take on challenging tasks and see them through to completion. Groves served in a number of significant military roles prior to the Manhattan Project, including working on the Pentagon's construction, which at the time was the largest office structure in the world. Additionally, he helped build a number of significant military buildings, including as Camp Beauregard, Fort Benning, and Fort Belvoir. Oppenheimer was given the responsibility of overseeing the scientific activities of the Manhattan Project. 
He swiftly made up a team of gifted and devoted physicists to assist him in this endeavor. Many of Oppenheimer's previous classmates and co-workers were enlisted, and they were all extremely accomplished physicists, mathematicians, and engineers. Some of the most brilliant minds of their generation made up Oppenheimer's team, and they were all keen to help with the war effort. Despite the size of the undertaking, Oppenheimer and his team put an endless effort to create the weapon. They put in an enormous amount of overtime, frequenting seven days a week, since such a strong sense of urgency and duty was apparent. They were aware that the outcome of the war was in their hands, and they felt morally obligated to use their scientific knowledge to contribute to its swift conclusion. They experienced numerous difficulties along the way, but they never lost focus on their objective. To organize the vast scientific and engineering effort required to construct the bomb, they collaborated closely with other scientists and engineers as well as Manhattan Project Director Leslie Groves. Oppenheimer and his crew remained steadfast in their dedication despite the strain and challenges, and their efforts eventually paid off after three years of tireless work. The world witnessed the first ever successful test of the atomic bomb. A sizable contingent of military and scientific officials attended the test, which was held at a distant location in the desert. On a 100-foot tower, a bomb called the Gadget was positioned with equipment to measure its yield all around it. At 5.29 a.m. local time, the bomb went off, and the explosion that followed was unlike anything anyone had ever witnessed. After a powerful explosion that caused a massive mushroom cloud to rise into the sky, the Trinity site test created an incredible flash of light that illuminated the whole desert. The explosion sent out a shock wave that could be felt for miles, and it totally destroyed the location in where it occurred. The heat from the explosion evaporated the tower and transformed the sand around it into something resembling glass due to its extreme heat. A weapon as powerful as the first atomic bomb had never been seen before and sent a strong message to the Axis powers. Now I am become death. The Destroyer of Worlds. Oppenheimer had a complicated connection with both the project and the bomb he helped develop. He was greatly concerned by the ethical and moral ramifications of the bomb despite his persistent efforts and dedication to the project. He was naturally pacifistic and had previously been a fervent supporter of international disarmament and peace. For Oppenheimer, the bomb's successful test in July 1945 marked a turning point. While he was proud of the project's scientific accomplishments, he was equally scared by the bomb's destructive potential and any possible negative effects. He became a vociferous opponent of the bomb, the ensuing arms race, and the creation of even more devastating weapons. Oppenheimer's fall from grace ultimately resulted from this battle, as he was at odds with the government and the military due to his outspoken opinions and resistance to further weapon development. His security clearance was revoked, and a scathing investigation followed. These events made matters worse between Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project. Oppenheimer persevered in his advocacy for nuclear disarmament despite these obstacles, becoming one of the most influential voices in the field's history and creating a lasting legacy. The account of the Manhattan Project serves as both a reminder of the amazing accomplishments that humanity can achieve and a sobering reminder of why such destructive forces now have a place in our world. Thank you for watching. Please give us a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel if you thought this material was interesting. We value your support and are excited to continue providing you with intriguing tales. Discover the past to enrich your present. Until next time.